Hello, this is Mr. Turk, and today I'm going to show you how to make your name tag file in Photoshop. So I've collected um, a couple of images from Facebook and my phone and the internet, and I've just put them in a folder here, and these are going to be the images that go behind the letters in my name. Next, you're going to open up Photoshop. Go down to the Start menu. Click on that and then click on Photoshop or click on the Photoshop icon in your taskbar. When Photoshop opens, uh, you're going to create a new file and uh, click in Create New. Uh, make sure you give your file a name, last name, first name, and then your project title, which is name tag. And then for this file, uh, you can make it 8.5 by 11 if you want. Uh, you can also make it the size of your um, uh, computer screen if you look up the resolution for that. Uh, I'm going to make it 12 by 16 inches at 300 pixels per inch. Uh, actually, let's do 8.5 by 11. And we'll do a landscape. I'm going to click Create. When your file opens, make sure you go to File. Save as. Uh, the name you entered for your file should still be in the file name box. And make sure you save it as a Photoshop document. Um, and make sure you save it in the right folder. And then click Save. And as you're working on your file, make sure you hit Control S or File Save uh, so that you don't lose any of your changes. All right, real quick, I'm going to go over the uh, Zoom shortcuts again. Uh, if I want to zoom in, I hit Control plus. If I want to toggle to my hand key, I hold down the space bar, and I can use my hand tool to click and drag around my document. If I want to zoom out, I can hit Control minus, or I can hit Control zero to snap the image back into my window. And uh, try to remember those tools because they're going to be real helpful for this project. Uh, if you're still having trouble with those, you can use the magnifying glass tool, the zoom tool. Just click on that or hit the Z key. Uh, and you can click and drag to zoom in or zoom out. And that's really easy to use. Again, let's hit Control-0 to snap the window back into place. So let's type our name using the type tool. Uh, the type tool is in the bottom of your toolbox. Uh, just go over to the T icon or hit the T key on your keyboard. When you click on the type tool, you're going to notice that the options for the tool are in the options bar. Uh, up here, we can switch the font. Let's change it to Bauhaus. And then we can make it a little bit bigger. And we can change the color, but really we're just going to leave it black and we're not going to change any of these other settings. I'll let you mess around and pick your own fonts. When you have your uh, font picked and the size picked, go to your document with your type tool and just click once. And that's going to start your cursor. And then once your cursor is active, type out your name. I actually don't like that, so I'm going to make it all capital. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Again, if you want to adjust your um, your name here, you can highlight it like you would in Microsoft Word. And you can increase the size. Make it nice and big. When you're all done editing and typing, uh, go to the check mark icon and click on that. And that will commit your type. If you ever want to re-edit the type, Make sure you have your type tool active and just click with your cursor on your type and that'll make it uh, active again and you can change the font or you know make it larger or smaller whatever you want to do. Make sure you hit the check mark to commit it. Uh, if your name has an accent and you don't know the uh, shortcut key for getting that accent um, Photoshop actually has what's called a glyph panel. And the glyph panel allows you to insert specific um, accented glyphs or letters uh, is what a glyph actually is.
Um, so to open that panel, go to Type, Panels, Glyphs Panel. And what this is going to do is it's going to show you every single um, letter in the type. So if I wanted this E to have an accent above it, I could scroll down and find the E with an accent. Uh, I'm not seeing the exact one that I want, but seems to be one that's close enough here. So let's use that one. And then when we're all done, we just check mark it. And that can be really handy if you're having trouble looking for uh, a certain glyph with the accent above it. Um, and some and some fonts, like this font, I don't think it has the proper accent. Uh, so that can depend on your font as well. Let's say you mess up and do something wrong. Um, you can always hit Control Z. Uh, or you can go to your history panel, and your history panel is up here, and that'll allow you to go back a step in time. So that's really handy. Uh, remember to always use your history panel or Control Z, or you can hit Control Alt Z, and that also sends you back a step in your history panel. All right, so I've got my images in my folder and I'm going to place them into my Photoshop file and we're going to use the letters to make a selection and then we're going to convert that selection to a mask and none of that makes any sense right now but it will in a couple of steps. So first let's place the image for my letter J. So we're going to go to File, Place Embedded. And then we're going to go to the folder that has my images. Name tags, and I'm going to place this uh, photo of these purple flowers. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to click place. When you place an image into Photoshop, you're going to hit the check mark icon. And then you're going to right click on that layer and you're going to rasterize that layer. And then you're going to switch to the move tool and the show transform controls will automatically be active and that's going to allow you to um, transform your image. Uh, when we transform our image you want to hold down the shift key and click and drag with that so that your image stays constrained and that's going to make sure that your image doesn't get distorted. Okay, don't let go of the shift key and don't distort your images. If you distort your image, hit the cancel transformation and retransform it. And make sure you hold down the shift key. All right, I'm going to place my flowers over here. I like my transformation, so I'm going to hit the check mark to commit to that transformation. And now I'm ready to make my layer mask. All right, so now I'm ready to make my layer mask. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put my flower layer beneath my letters. So I'm going to click and drag that flower layer and put it beneath my letters. I'm going to make sure my letters are active as a layer. So I'm going to click on those. And we're going to select the J. So we're going to go to our wand tool. Our wand tool is underneath the quick select tool. So click and hold on the quick selection tool and let go of your mouse on the magic wand tool. And then you're going to go up to the options bar and make sure the contiguous option is checked for the wand tool. All that means is, is when we select these black pixels on the J, we're only selecting the black pixels on the J. We're not selecting all of the black pixels on this layer, which would include the rest of the letters. So when I click on the J, you're going to notice the marching ants. The marching ants are kind of like Photoshop's way of saying you've selected these pixels. So anytime you make a selection, you're going to see these animated marching ants. 
And what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to our layer panel and make a mask. So the way to make a mask is we're going to go over to layer panel. We're going to click on the layer we want to mask. And what we want to do is we want to mask these pink flowers with the selection I made of the letter J. So I'm actually going to click on my pink flower layer. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the layer panel and I'm going to click on add layer mask. What that automatically does is it turns that selection of the J into a layer mask. And you can't see it right now because the Joseph layer, my name, is on top of my pink letter layer. So we're going to turn off my Joseph layer's visibility in the layer panel. And now you can see that I've made a mask of the J here with my flower image. All right, so now I'm going to go through all of those steps in one step. Uh, and I'm going to go kind of fast. So if you're having trouble, go back to the previous explanations. And those should be a little bit slower. So again, I'm going to turn on my Joseph layer. And we're going to go to File, Place Embedded. And this time, I'm going to place an image of this paint splatter over here. And click place. All right, I'm going to take my image, hold down the shift key, just make it a bit smaller. And click and drag it over to the J and the O, kind of position it how I want. I'm going to hit the check mark to confirm that. And then I'm going to right click on that layer and I'm going to rasterize that layer. I'm going to make sure I have the wand tool selected. I'm going to make sure my name is the active layer. And when my name is the active layer, I can select uh, the O if uh, my contiguous box is checked right here. And that'll make sure only the O is selected. And now we can make our layer mask. So now I can go to the paint splatter layer that I just placed. Uh, I can click on that to make it active. And I can add a new layer mask at the bottom of the layer panel. And that's automatically going to make my O uh, the mask for my paint splatter. And I can look at that by turning off the visibility of the Joseph layer. So that's a pretty straightforward set of steps. Uh, you can do that in a couple of clicks. And it's really not that hard. You just got to get used to this set of steps. Um, make sure you place all your images. Hold down the shift key for each placement. And make sure you're just selecting each individual letter. Uh, what I'm going to show you right now is um, some extra steps. Okay. So stick around and I'll show you some cool things you can do with this project. All right, so let's just assume I've finished masking all my layers uh, and I have all my letters with images behind them. Uh, and here's some extra things you could do. Uh, let's say you wanted to make these letters a bit bigger. Uh, they behave just like any other uh, layer that you can transform. So if you go to the Move tool, uh, you can transform those layers if you want. Uh, notice they're going to behave a little bit differently. The image behind the mask is going to scale with the mask. Okay. Um, and that can have its advantages and disadvantages. Um, it's annoying if you didn't place your image perfectly. So if you actually do want to adjust or scale the image behind the mask, you have to go to the layer panel and you have to unlink the two. Uh, so that option is right here with this little chain link. If I click on that unlink option, that's going to allow me to pick the mask or the image. And I can scale either or independently of one another. So let's say I want to move my image around behind my mask. So I'm going to click on my image thumbnail. I'm going to go over to my canvas here. And that should allow me to move my image around. Okay, so there we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, let's say your name is a bit too small. 
and you want to make it a little bit bigger. You can use the move tool to scale multiple layers at once. Uh, simply make a shift click selection in your layer panel. So go down to your layer panel, click the top layer, and then hold down the shift key and click the bottom layer. And that'll allow you to manipulate all these images as one. So hold down the shift key, click and drag, and you can make them all larger. Uh, when you scale something, again, hold down the shift key so you don't distort it. And when you're done scaling it, uh, click on the check mark. All right, let's say you wanted to mess with um, an individual letter. Uh, one of the cool things you can do is use an adjustment layer. Uh, adjustment layers can be set to manipulate multiple layers or just one layer. So I'm going to show you how to change the color of the J uh, using a hue and saturation adjustment layer. So I'm going to go to my adjustment panel and I'm going to click on the hue saturation adjustment layer. Okay. And before I do anything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the hue saturation adjustment layer only edits the layer below it. So I'm going to hold down the alt key and I'm going to click on the in-between of these two layers and that's going to mask it only to this layer. Uh, that button is also in the properties panel for that adjustment layer. Uh, and if you uncheck it, that'll turn it off. If you click it, that'll turn it on. And for the hue adjustment layer, it's pretty straightforward. I click and drag this panel over here so we can see what we're doing. Uh, if you want to change the color of something, it's really cool. It's really easy. Just click the colorize option and then just adjust the hue slider to whatever you want. Let's say we want it to be more blue. We could turn up the saturation. And now I have these kind of bluish flowers. Uh, if you don't want it to be so drastic, you can uncheck that colorize option. And the same sort of adjustments apply. The problem is it's going to change all the colors. Not only the uh, blue of the flower, it's going to change the green part in here. And again, you can mess with all these sliders as much as you want. Uh, do whatever you want. Have some fun. The adjustments panel is full of really, really cool options and things that you can kind of mess with. Uh, try, try out an adjustment layer for each of your letters if you want. And make sure you have images behind all of your letters to complete the name tag assignment. Uh, the last thing I'll kind of encourage you to do is maybe paint your background. Um, using the brush tool for the first time is kind of intimidating. The brush tool has a lot of settings and adjustments to it. Uh, it can be really, really frustrating to use. So again, this is like super extra if you want to mess around with this. Um, I'm going to click on my background layer down here. I'm going to go to my brush tool and then click on that. Uh, the brush tool has a bunch of options. Uh, if I go up to my options bar, you can adjust the opacity, you can adjust the blending mode, the flow. Um, and then in this little drop down menu is the brush tip shake. Uh, we can make it larger, smaller, we can make it harder, softer. There's a bunch of presets in here. So if I want like a real weird special effect brush, like a splatter brush, I could click in here and now I have a splatter brush. Let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to pick, uh, let's see, let's pick like a light blue for my background. And then I'm just going to click and drag. It's going to give me this kind of speckled background. Have fun with the brush tool. Mess around with it. Uh, it's a really, really cool tool. It's got a lot of options. Um, I'm not going to pretend to try to teach you all of it right now. Uh, I would say just have fun with it and see what you can do.